Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Sam as always, and with the conclusion of Adobe Max, let's dive into all the brand new features in Adobe InDesign 2026, and this is going to be version 21. We're trying to get to 100,000 subs, so if you enjoy what I have to say here, please help smash that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. One thing I will have to say is that the features and upgrades that we got this year are a lot better than what we got last year, in my opinion. So definitely get hype for what's going on in this video. First up, let's look at flex layouts. This is the beginning of a game changing feature. I think what they're trying to do here is to automate the layout process. So when you move elements around on the page, everything else will adapt accordingly. It's like responsive design inside InDesign. But I don't quite think it's there yet. I'll show you guys what I mean. It works really great in their demo file. You just select a group of objects like images and captions and go to window, then flex layout to make a flex container. Then all you have to do is set dimensioning, spacing and alignment and watch your layout reflow as you resize the container. However, this quickly falls apart when I try it on the document that I've already laid out. It's still version one, so expect a few quirks, but I'm really excited on where this might take us in a couple of months. Second feature we're covering is improved import and conversion tools. You can now open PDFs and Illustrator files directly in InDesign while keeping most of the formatting intact. I personally think this is a huge upgrade, an insane and absolute lifesaver if your client only has a PDF, but you need to make edits. Reminds me of when Illustrator first received image trays for some reason. So I had to try this out and I tested it on two different scenarios. First, I tried to open a PDF of one of my own layouts that I made in InDesign, and it did a great job at converting all my frames and text back into an editable InDesign format. Then I tried this with a PDF brochure I found off the internet. It may or may not have been made in InDesign, but InDesign did a great job of converting the PDF. And it was also great too, because InDesign detected the font they were using and automatically activated any fonts that I did not have. In addition, they've also added Illustrator compatibility with InDesign, which is super in line with my Adobe Max speaker session. Let me know if you guys check that out. Uh, you just have to save your Illustrator file with the create PDF compatible file checked and then open the Illustrator file and edit. It's just like that, super easy. Okay, so the third feature we're covering is integration of templates and Adobe Express. Uh, and templates are showing up directly in InDesign. It's not quite there yet. You'll see some new templates right in the home screen of InDesign. And these come from Adobe Express, which is handy for a quick start project or social media layouts. And was not exactly what I thought it was going to be as every template you choose will still need to be opened and edited in Adobe Express. But once you're in Express, you can easily make changes. One workaround is to download the Express template as a PDF and then use the feature we just covered in the previous segment to read the PDF in InDesign. It does a pretty good job of converting everything, page size, font, etc but it would have definitely been nicer if we could do everything natively in InDesign. If you're finding yourself looking for templates that you can edit in InDesign, check out the templates that we have on our website. We're currently trying to build out our arsenal of things that people want and would love your thoughts on the templates that you'd like to see next. So leave that down in the comments below. In addition to our free tutorials online, we're in the process of making these beautiful designs available to you guys. In addition, for more fluid templates like these, we also provide you with the source files so you can customize your own design. So we're still building all of this out, but if that interests you, keep an eye out on lystudio.com. And now let's get back into the video. So the fourth feature we're covering is GPU rendering. The essence of this is we can now utilize graphic processing unit, think NVIDIA RTX 3070, which is what I'm currently running, to help us better preview our layouts. So in our typical spread, we usually have previews that look like this. If you zoom in, it's gonna be pixelated and that's just to save our computer from lagging all the time when we're going from page to page and having to render all of that. So now what we can do is actually go up to view and turn on GPU preview, which is basically using a completely different hardware to preview all the images, which frees up your CPU 
to do other things like edit text or multitask. And so hopefully switching this on will not only get you clear images, but also frees up your computer a little bit so that it gets a little bit less laggy. So I really like that quality of life performance boost that they did. But let me know if you guys have noticed a difference in your performance for working in GPU rendering. Okay, so Future 5 is real-time collaboration and cloud editing. So you can now edit text directly in a browser. Yeah, in a browser. Save your file as the cloud document, then choose share for text editing. Send that link to a collaborator and they can edit the copy in Chrome while you continue working in InDesign. Just like any other cloud-based software, edits sync instantly both ways. And I think this is perfect for remote teams, client reviews, and I feel like this is a much needed feature in InDesign. However, do keep in mind that it's still text only for now, no layout editing yet, but it's a big leap towards true live collaboration. Okay, feature six is managing and sharing cloud documents. So I'm gonna keep this pretty quick. Let's talk about managing your cloud documents in InDesign. You can do it right inside the app in the Creative Cloud desktop app or straight from the Creative Cloud website. So from the home screen, just hit your files. You can make folders, rename stuff, move things around or sort by date or name. Right click a document and you'll see options like share, duplicate, move, sync, for seven days or delete. That syncing option is nice because it lets you work offline for a week and automatically update later. The same tools show up in the desktop app and on the website. So you can open, rename, download, delete, whatever you need. That's it. Easy file management, same tools everywhere and way smoother than before. Let's move on. Okay, last feature we're covering is math expression and equation support. So if you're a scientist or a mathematician, this one's for you. InDesign now supports editable equations. You can paste math ML or even copy from Microsoft Word and still retain the formatting. They've added numerous math symbols and expressions and the ability to customize the look and feel of your equations makes it that much easier to integrate into your design. And I think this is huge for scientific or academic publishers. And that's everything new in Adobe InDesign 2026. What do you guys think? From flex layouts and real tight collaboration to math equations, templates, performance boosts, and import improvements, this update is full of fresh tools. Which of these new features do you think you'll be using in your everyday workflow? And please let me know what you guys think about the new Flex layout. So if you guys have learned anything new from this, please don't hesitate to leave a like, subscribe, leave your thoughts on the new updates below. And with that said, check out our website. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.